everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Chris Yee. I'm Camilla Cleghorn. Today we're taking a look at a game called Roll to the Top, which um, does not show a handful of dice being thrown at the mm. uh, camera, but it is a roll and write. Innovative that way. I don't believe way. it. Wow. How can you even tell? Because uh, the world is apparently a dodecahedron. Um, and it's 20 now you know. die. It's right. It's right. It's one word I know. Um, this is a game that originally was published by Quali. I reviewed it mm -hmm. back then. This is an updated version of it with almost the same rules. Um, okay. The one die is slightly different. I'll show you. Each player is going to get a map. They're in these envelopes, which um, I won't be keeping, but everyone's going to get the same object. So you have the pyramid on one side or the Eiffel Tower on the other. So here's an example of two different ones. And each player is also going to get a marker, which are included in the game. One person is going to roll all these numbers and look for the evens. I didn't roll any evens, so I'll re-roll. Looking for evens. Got an 8 and a 10. So I start with two dice. So on your turn, you roll these dice plus this other die. The other die here is going to, at the end of a round, it says exchange a die for one here add a die or subtract a die. You don't roll this if you have all five dice because you will always subtract a die at the end of the round. And if you have only one die, you will always add one to it at the end of a round. But let's say these are the dice that I rolled. I rolled a one, an eight, and a 16. Now all the players can use these numbers. So we'll take a look at the pyramid here. This is like the most basic of all the different things that you can do here. And I can write some, all, or none of these numbers in. So I'm definitely going to write a 1 here. But here's the thing. You can write a number in any spot with a dot. So you can see all the dots here on the bottom row of the pyramid. Here in the Taj Mahal, they're on the bottom. Here you can see they're kind of spread a little bit out. You can write them in a dot, or you can write them on top of one of other ones that are supported. So for example, I could do this. I could write the 1, the 8, and the 16 here. That would be a pretty bad move, actually. And I'll tell you why because the numbers on top of the 16 have to be the same or higher, and that's going to get hard to do. Even putting the 8 out is kind of deadly. So this one, I might just roll right to 1, 8, and 16. Let's roll some more. Now I got a 2, 3, 6, 12, and 14. So I could put the 2 here. I might do the 3 there and put the 6 there. Whew, I don't know. It's going to be harder to go up. Now here's one thing you can do. You can add numbers together. So let's say these numbers were rolled next, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll add the, this 2 and the 9 and put an 11 here. And again, I probably wouldn't write such high numbers so far down, but you could do that. You could have as many dice as you want. So if you do have 20s up here, I can put 30s or even higher on the top ones. That's the game. You're just going to keep rolling the dice, adding or subtracting with this one how many dice are rolled, and the first person or people to fill in the entire thing win the game. Here's an example of one that's filled in. You see it went all the way up to 25 there at the top, and that's great. Again, it doesn't matter what numbers you put in. They just have to get equal to or higher as you build upwards. You just also want to be the first person done. Now, the one set of maps that I showed you is from extra maps that you can get. The other ones that come inside this one here you can see the, you have from Yosemite, and here at Marina Bay Sands, and we also have this Major Oak, and the Matterhorn, and there's all different maps that you can get, and they all kind of work the same way. There's also solo rules to the game, you can play that, and there is a version of the game where you can play starting with high numbers and going lower, although that's harder, because once you get to one, you can do nothing else. While with multiple dice, you could possibly get a, what, a 40, a 50, I think. 50 if you add, get the highest number mm -hmm. on all the dice, which that never happened. Math. Yeah, I was not able to do that. No, I, might I, be, I might be wrong there. I think it's right, 20 plus 12 plus 8 plus 6 plus 4. I'm anyway. going to trust you. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, um, by the way, the four-sided die in this game should be the way every four-sided die is in every game oh, I ever. I love it. It's like I a rune know. almost, right? Yes. So good. So good. Kind of actually reminds me of the runes from Nagaraja. Anyway, tangent. Also, every roll and write game in existence should now be on laminated sheets. You know oh, people nice. are going to do that, but I digress. I like the art. I like how everything looks in this game. They didn't change much of these land 
you know, the, the, the different buildings and things that different I can remember. wonders or whatever they are, yeah. Some of those ones I showed you that were from the other expansion sets have special rules to them, and some of them play a little bit different. You mentioned the Eiffel Tower near the end. You're just writing one number on top of another number. Yeah, yeah, that was an interesting one. Yeah, I, I think they don't, they feel different even though they don't play different, right? Like, the yeah. rules are still the same, but it does feel like they have different tweaks on the challenge. You know what I mean? Different ways you have to think about it. Like, the one Eiffel Tower, for example, has some overhang so you can throw a number away, essentially. Mm -hmm. You know, because you're not going to ever put anything on top of it. Different things like that. So they manage to feel different without ever having a different rule set outside of the expansion ones that come. It is neat because you know, the area where there's like nothing, there's no number underneath the spot once you're next to it. Like that's like one small little extra rule. You're next to this one, there's no number underneath it. Now you can throw any number again. Mm -hmm. That's like a nice little just moment of relief. Yeah. Whereas if you're playing the, the Giza Pyramid, it is every number just has to be you know, right. bigger than the ones below, or equal to or lesser. I think that's a really good first recommended map because you're going to get the game. The pyramid is a 100%, good one. Yeah, right. and then you can jump to any map. I mean, th this one is called Journeys because they want you to go from like you know one area to the next kind of a thing. Yeah, there's even like mm -hmm. postcards and stuff in there. Okay, it's a very pretty, it's a very cute production, uh, and it looks clearly better than the the previous the Quali edition. I've not played that one, so mm -hmm. I can't really compare, but. You know, this one has a shelf presence that kind of grabs your attention. Yeah. And just those little touches like that that four-sided die. Good so attention good. to detail. I think some people are not going to be fans of this because they're used to a lot of the more modern roll and writes are all about combos. Roll some dice here, and I can use this combo here, and this and that, and they're complex. This is one of the simplest ones in existence. Mm -hmm. You're just rolling dice and then racing to write them as fast as possible. You're pushing your luck, like there's, I roll a one, two, and an eight. I'm gonna use that eight. I'm like, <laughs> what a fool. But we might roll high for a while, and now you're ahead of me because you did that. But the simplicity to this is the charm. This is a game Absolutely. I can play with almost anybody. Absolutely. That's what I was going to say is the simplicity of this. I mean, it's hard to say it's completely innovative with this mechanism or anything like that because there are very, it's very simple. But I think that's the charm of it. It just kind of feels like you're getting back to some basics of the roll and rights uh, without sacrificing that kind of tense or angst, you know, that it can build as you as you really hope the dice go in your favor and, and you can get what you want. And I love the clean design of if you could finish it first, you win. Done. You know, there's no points. It's just, it really is a racing game at the end of the day. And first done wins. And so you don't have to, you don't ever have to use a number, but you're also going to see yourself falling further and further behind because everyone else is using those numbers and getting closer. And so I think that having that clean rule set, you could understand it right out of the gate, um, just kind of keeps it clean. And that, un unfortunately, that feels innovative these days with all the more complicated roll That's and rights true. and all the different rules. You know, it just feels feels very comfortable, I think. You know, this is a game that did come out originally years ago. It's getting a nice you know, new coat of paint and some more expansion-y type of stuff that I don't know if, if was around. But it, yeah, I, I feel that. I agree with you. That's my way of agreeing with you. Oh, okay. It sounded well, that was almost good. like accusatory. I was ready, though. I was right. like... You're going to splash that hot shot in your face. Yeah. No, I... I, I <laughs> and I, I, think it, I, I think you noticed that, like, oh, yeah, this is what a lot of roller and games used to be like, and it's still fun to pull this one out and be like, let's just write some numbers. Because at the same time, it doesn't feel dated. Right? Exactly. And I think that's good. Well, the fresh coat of paint here doesn't hurt at all. No, mm -hmm. and, and I like the little yeah, mechanism, yeah, the, like the few little choices in between. At the end of your turn, you can remove or add a die or something like that. It gives you yeah. some little control, kind of like you said. Oh, I, I chose to go with some higher numbers. Now I'm going to get rid of the low ones to kind of push the numbers higher than, mm -hmm. than yes. maybe could mm -hmm. go. What would you give it? I'm going to give this one a 7.5. I think that it's really pleasant. I think it's really pretty. The great production helps too. Uh, and uh, one of the things all, I, I noticed about this, I was looking at the Kickstarter page for this, and this is fulfilled like two months early. So I'm just I'm throwing that out there because that's something noticeable. That gives that's me, common. Everyone does it. Yes, mm -hmm. you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, just little things like that are notable and, and worth mentioning. That I have trust, you know, in the in the company, and they're choosing good games to reprint. And so I'm really glad this one's back in print and, and available. 7.5 for me is good for a very, very light, simple roll and write like this. I give this one an 8. I like it straight across the board. It's one of my favorite roll and write games. It just is. Because I don't have to think a whole lot about it. And I'm just, it's just pressure luck a little bit. You know, how high do I want to make the numbers go? I like the structures theme of it. 
that's fun to me. I like how each map feels a little different. It's really fun when you're like, oh, a 20. Oh, wait, I can write a 20 here and I'm done. Yeah, in your face, everybody else. I don't know, I enjoy that. Yes, in your face, as I crushed my children at this game. No, I lost them. But. I'm coming in at eight as well on this one. I really liked it. Like I said, from the first time, it just felt comfortable. You know, I, I have no connection to the original game, so I didn't know of it as a reprint or anything like that. But I remember just thinking and reading the rules and being like, Oh, that's it. But it was an exciting, oh, that's it. You know, yeah. like, yes, you know, I'm a big fan of roll and rights, and I'm also a big fan of the, the bigger ones and the complex and more encompassing ones. But this one just felt like one that I would grab often. You know, I played it solo. I thought the solo went really, really well. It's very smooth. There's not a lot of overhead to it. Um, I think it's really pretty. I mean, I, I really just can't say enough positive about it. It's just comfortable. I like it. And it's one that I would see myself going to over and over again for that filler, whether it's a solo or with a group, something like that roll and write that you can teach quickly, you can play quickly, but still feel a challenging, tense experience um, that mattered. And that's a real sweet spot for me. So for me, it's an eight. There you go, folks. That's Roll to the Top. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Chris Yee. I'm Camilla Cleghorn. Apparently this is PBS now.